wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, to weigh in. Jordan, it's great to see you again. Thanks very much for being here. How do you see the FTX collapse? Well, first of all, I think there's some misconceptions here about FTX. People are referring to it as an exchange. But it's not an exchange. I mean, it's, it's a, like a brokerage firm or a bank that was holding customers' monies, and they were basically siphoning it off. He was using it his own personal piggy bank, Sam Bankman Freed. So people deposit their money in FTX because they want to trade, like any brokerage firm. It would be the equivalent of, like, you going to J.P. Morgan, right, you know, to, and, and to Chase, right? And you deposit your money in your Chase bank account, and then you find out that actually Jamie Dimon has been taking your money personally and going to Las Vegas and gambling on the weekends because, well, you know, your money, his money, what's the difference? So that's what was really happening. He was just using wow. all of these funds that people were depositing in the brokerage firm, FTX, which is really a brokerage firm, and then using it as his own personal piggy bank. They bought condos, whatever else they bought. They're gambling on wild derivative trading, right? So they're leveraging to the hilt. So had to end badly, and it was definitely a fraud from the start. That's unbelievable. That's a great analogy also. So what happens now, Jordan? I mean, where did the money go? I know that this firm started in Hong Kong, and then they moved to the Bahamas. So there's also investors, Chinese investors, that uh, lead me to the Chinese Communist Party as well. So there's that element. But where does this story go, and will, will the investors ever get their money back? I strongly doubt that there's a lot of money here to be gotten back. I think that, you know, when you're leveraging the way they were leveraging, it's really easy to take these huge losses. I don't think they were very good traders, by the way. So what happened was the whole thing started when, in the early days of crypto, there was a certain trade where you could buy Bitcoin. I think it was like the Korea trade, they call it. You buy Bitcoin in one part of the world, and it was selling at a premium in Korea. So you had this arbitrage, so to speak, where you could buy it for X and sell it for X plus 30. 30%. Very easy in 2017. But of course, like all arbitrages, then the professionals get in and they close that gap. And suddenly it's not so easy to make money anymore. So FTX slash Alameda, right, the sister company, was built on that one trade. So as it got more competitive, they had no edge and they started losing money in their trades more and more. And Sam Bankman Fried unhatched, he hatched this plan, which, hey, we need more money. Let's start a broker term slash exchange and convince people to deposit their money so they give them great trading rates, amazing trades, but we'll actually just take all the money for ourselves and trade with it. That's really wow. what happened. So FTX was formed to fund Alameda. And I they see. were terrible traders. And I, I watched some interviews. It's shocking. Here's what's also shocking. So like Sequoia, nothing that's Sequoia, but to say that they did their due diligence so nothing, really? They should hire me to do due diligence. I mean, you could see through this thing. Anyone that went down there and kicked the tires and saw this group of kids sitting around in one penthouse somewhere, all having sex with each other, just speak to them. It's plainly obvious that they knew very little about what they were doing. They were in so far over their heads, and everyone's just giving them their money, giving them more money. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always obvious in retrospect. This one, I believe, if anyone really looked closely, they would have seen it easily. So how did he hoodwink all those people? I mean, Shaq and Giselle and Tom Brady all went and did commercials for the firm. And what was it, Jordan, that actually was the straw that broke the camel's back that, you know, they were getting squeezed so much and there was nowhere to run, the money was gone? So here's the thing. I, I, you really can't fault Tom Brady and Giselle and Shaq. I mean, they're not sophisticated enough to have known this. They're relying on people, their agents and their managers. So to them, you know, they really, they should, I guess they got to pay the money back or whatever, you know, on top of that. But it's not their fault. I mean, they could not have known. And they get presented with lots of opportunities that appear to be legitimate. Their name is on the stadium. So that's, so that's I think they deserve a pass. In terms of other people, though, the advisors to those people and the big VC firms that got involved with them, that funded them, they deserve, something's got to happen there. Because, you know, to them, like to Sequoia, honestly, they lose 100 or 200 million. It's like, it's speeding ticket. Next. They make so much money on all the other ones. But like on Luna, most of these big firms 
got out. And it was the small yeah. investor that got caught holding the bag on terror, right? Yeah. They made so much money. So they get in early. It's like almost a, it's, its own version of a pump and dump, so to speak, on an institutional level. In this case, you know, when it gets really, really bad, then everyone loses, even the big guys lost. But generally, they win on these type of things. They go up. These are the big guys that got in early get out. And it's the average investor that gets caught holding the bag.